the, the term image control really was just um, a distillation of, of all the things that we did, you know, and, and um, I suppose I was also trying to put us in the driver's seat as, as if um, we're the ones that are controlling the images. After I left art school, um, I was working for an audiovisual company and doing big multi-screen slideshows, like 36 slide projectors, two movie projectors, big product launches and the like. And as it turns out, Keith, as a photographer, had been working for um, another slide production company. And uh, due to a, a string of practical jokes at the company I was at, I got kicked out and was without a job, doing a bit of freelance work, and Keith found himself without that so much to do at the same time. And we realised that we had complementary skills and we liked doing the same things, and it just suddenly made sense that we should actually start a company and do it ourselves. I mean, there were a couple of large companies doing audiovisuals at the time, and we were one of the smaller ones, and we managed to win some pretty big shows. So there was a bit of surprise, I think, from the industry when we actually did those big shows, and we pulled it off, and we, you know, we, well, I think we did a really great job. I think we were very, very much always about getting quality on the screen, you know, making the, the best possible um, project that we possibly could, and we all, both of us and, and the staff that we hired would work through the night to get those things done. So it was a bit of a, um, not exactly a, a, a cowboy approach, but I mean we really, we poured a lot more into it than I think that a lot of companies did at the time and, and probably what I would do today. <laughs> it was called multimedia, which was actually quite true at the time because there was some moving pictures some and some and a lot of stills. And the way that that worked was um, we would have a bank of slide projectors, all of which would fire off one after the other. And at times we would run animated sequences that way. So we'd have maybe um, nine projectors f um, pointing at the one screen. We could run slides pretty quickly and get something up to, um, you know, maybe 12 frames per second or so and get, get a nice moving sort of image on that. But that wasn't really the strength of it. That was sort of imitating moving pictures. The strength of that medium was the fact that we could put first generation 35mm photography up on the screen with um, very high quality audio. That was really the strength of that medium. It was just amazing. Well, we did uh, work for Ford. We did a lot of work for Nissan. We had um, several big insurance company clients. And, and those were quite big events. And it wasn't just the audiovisual that there was also staging and, and like a theatrical kind of component as well that we did. Sometimes we'd have actors on stage with proper theatre lighting and sets. So it was definitely multimedia. We had people that I'd worked with in the past, or Keith knew as well, that we, we knew and trusted to come in and do things like, like the more theatrical sort of stage management, management side of it. And I guess Keith and I learned along the way to do our own kind of tour management, which was organising these, these um, um, capital city tours. So we do <coughs> Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Brisbane, and, and at times um, overseas as well, like Hong Kong or um, Singapore, Fiji. It was very much like um, the, the kind of optical compositing that was done for visual effects at that time. So to get um, images shot in one place, composited with images shot from the other place, you couldn't just stick them in a computer and like Photoshop, make a mat and, and plaster them together. You had to do it optically on a process camera, on like a rostrum camera. So we'd have a, um, a filtered, filtered light source underneath the camera and a high quality 35mm um, compositing camera above that. And we'd have to intersperse mats, foreground, background mats, and then wind the camera back and re-expose the foreground into those mats. So it was really quite technically uh, difficult process. Yeah, it was, and it was hit or miss, because you'd run it through and you'd think, well, I'm pretty sure that worked, and I'm pretty sure the mats didn't. Like, if you put your mats, the mats were um, black and white cotolith um, images, and if you put them through a developing bath that was a little bit too hot, they'd shrink. So you'd, you'd come back and your foreground wouldn't actually, you'd have a line around the foreground where it ma matched with the background. So there was sort of a lot of technical sides to it to get it to actually work, which is exactly what Hollywood was doing with the motion pictures at the time. We would sometimes shoot uh, motion picture components for a show, like the big car launches. We'd have a lot of stills explaining the technical side of the advances in the cars and whatever. And the moving picture stuff, sometimes we'd get that shot separately and that would run alongside. But the integration really happened when you started to get, um, when computers were involved and then eventually digital projection came in and you could, you could integrate all of that stuff all into one. But prior to that, really you'd have to have separate projection for the slides, separate projection for the moving pictures. So I remember Keith and I, um, Apple Computer started this um, trial and Apple at home 
campaign where you could actually borrow a machine and, and run it at home for a couple of days and then take it back if you didn't want it. I don't think we ever handed a computer back after that. That was what started us. <clears throat> and we could run, we could do our typesetting on it, we could do um, eventually image manipulation and image compositing on it, on the computers. And that was really a revolution, kind of a wave that carried us forward, I guess. Creating content is quite different. That's something that I think Keith's really driven and and created and out of a desire to, to not just execute other people's ideas. But that's, I mean, the time that we were working together, we pretty much were briefed and, and would provide you know, the best possible version of what they were, were asking for and needing. <clears throat>